Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer on Mod Capital. Today is December 11th. It's around 6 o'clock New York time. So tomorrow, of course, we'll be getting the big CPI report here in the U.S. We're looking for a month over month. We're looking for a flat reading. Uh, X Food and Energy, we're looking for a 0.3% increase month over month versus 0.2. Last month, CPI year over year, we're looking for a slight deceleration to 3.1% from 3.2%. Meanwhile, X Food and Energy year over year, we're looking for 4% flat with last month's reading. So um, at this point, you know, the core is going to probably, again, continue to matter more. Certainly, we've seen oil and gasoline prices come down, and that's what's kind of driving the lower numbers on the headline. Meanwhile, when we look at inflation swaps, they're pricing in a 3.13% year over year number on the headline, which suggests there could be a number that comes in higher than the median estimate of analysts, while they're also looking for a 0.05% increase on the month over month, which would round up to a 0.1 number and would be a beat on the uh, median as well. So swaps are pricing in a, in a higher, higher numbers on headlines. So it's something to be aware of. Swaps have done a pretty decent job at predicting these values in the past. And so it's worth being aware of how the swaps are currently trace, trading. Uh, when we also go back and we take a look, there will be more than just CPI tomorrow because tomorrow we're also going to get the 30-year auction. That's going to come uh, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Uh, again, last month the 30-year auction did not go well. Uh, today's auctions didn't go all that well either, but they weren't disasters. Uh, last month's 30-year auction was... Uh, pretty bad and so people will be paying particular attention to the 30 year and then of course you can see that the 10 year is also getting close to breaking this longer term downtrend and uh, also is very close to moving above its 10 day exponential moving average so momentum is is certainly beginning to show signs of life here for the 10 year and i would think that tomorrow's number will be fairly important if we were to get a hotter number on that headline like the swaps are pricing in, it would certainly uh, be a sign that you could see the 10-year uh, break out and, and begin to move higher. And um, based on where we are currently, if we were just to look at this and kind of guess we would be looking for a 38% retracement around 44, around 445 with a 60%, 61.8% retracement around 466. And, and those don't seem unreasonable given, you know, the types of moves that we typically see in other parts of the market. Um, and then when we look at the two-year yield, that's also showing signs of potentially showing a change in trend. Last week, we were talking about the potential for the rate to move down, and it actually held because the jobs data came in you know, better than expected. And certainly, you know, one can make a case that you could probably move back up to 482 uh, really before you run into any sort of major resistance levels on the two year. So it, it would seem like at this point, there's certainly further room for the 10 year to run in terms of rates moving up than there is for the two year. And that could suggest that you get some more uh, yield curve steepening uh, coming. Uh, in the in the coming in coming days and weeks and so you know obviously if you start getting rates moving up here you're going to start seeing the dollar begin to show signs of strengthening and then we also have what looks to be a potential head inverse head and shoulders pattern forming in the dollar which could lead to uh, a move back up to this 10440 level uh, a break above 10440 would certainly be an indication that there's further to climb here for the dollar potentially back to this 10560 region and when we look at the euro uh, versus the dollar, again, it's a very similar uh, sort of setup here because, uh, and really not surprisingly, since the, the dollar basket is mostly made up of the euro, um, the euro has broken an uptrend uh, on the RSI, suggesting that momentum is now leaving the euro. Uh, and you can see here that we're getting very close to support around 107 on the euro. If we were to break this level, we could start moving back down towards 106. Obviously, if you get a stronger, a hotter inflation print tomorrow, rates on the back of the curve rise, uh, that could certainly send the euro down. For the pound, we got up to the 61.8% retracement level. Uh, then we had this rising wedge pattern that broke. 
Uh, also, when we take a look at um, when we also take a look at the momentum, it looks like momentum is also broken and become negative. While we also move below the 10-day exponential moving average, which would also suggest a dollar strengthening with support at 125 or so and a potential breakdown back to this 123 level, obviously resistance somewhere around this 126.50 area. We'll look at the yen. Uh, the yen has been all over the place, uh, really, the last couple of days or so because of this, the on and off again, movements of the BOJ, which everyone thought was signaling would maybe raise rates in December, and then they kind of came out and said, no, they weren't going to raise rates in December. And that's just creating all sorts of confusion. But you can clearly see when you look at the technicals that we're trading below the 10-day exponential moving average. That certainly served as a resistance level today. We're also trading below the trend line and really just coming back and retesting it. So as long as we stay below the 10-day exponential moving average and stay below the trend line and we stay below resistance at 146 and a quarter, the momentum is telling us that the yen is going to continue to move lower. So really what we need to see at this point to become constructive on the yen rising is a break above this 10-day exponential moving average and this downtrend and this uptrend which would potentially set up a rise to 148.30. Otherwise, I think the down the trend for the yen continues to be lower actually towards 142. Um, and that's what that sort of is setting up at this point because at some point the BOJ is going to have to do something and whether it's in December or they come later, you know, later in the first quarter of the year, it seems like the days of the BOJ uh, sitting at negative interest rate policy is numbered, and I, I think the market is beginning to get that 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 sense. And when we move over to equities, um, you know, the Nasdaq today another strong showing. Um, we talked about the potential for it to rise back to its, you know, near all time high. We certainly surpassed this resistance level at sixteen and sixteen thousand thirty. It leaves the next major level of resistance at sixteen thousand five hundred ten. The old high in November was 16,764. I mean, if you had told me in, you know, November of 2021 that the Fed was going to raise rates 535 basis points and that by the end of 2023 you were going to still be at 16,660, I would have probably thought you were crazy. But, you know, here we are right now trading at 16,013 and uh right now there's no real resistance to the upside. Um, the only thing that really the, that you have from a bearish standpoint is you have this bearish divergence, which seems to be forming with, you know, higher highs on the price and lower highs on the RSI. Otherwise, the, the trend is clearly pointing higher and there's really not much in the form of resistance in this area that could stop it from really going up um, other than really itself. And the other odd thing, I guess, is that today you saw this divergence out of some of the larger cap stocks, and maybe that's a signal of things to come. But again, there's not really much resistance here for the NASDAQ up until this level uh, at 16,525. And you would really need to see almost a break below 15,750 at this point to really uh, start to see some downward momentum because there's very strong support in here at 16,022. And the Dow also moved up today. We were talking last week about the Dow. We were saying that um, resistance was up at this level here around 36,450. And um, sure enough, today we got up to that level and just about touched it. And that was where we stopped. And you can see the Dow is clearly overbought on the RSI. You can also see that, you know, but but at the same time, the Dow has further to rise here because we're not overbought on the Bollinger Band. So again, what I would be looking for on the upside is probably the upper band at 36,640. You would need a break below 36.25 to really start seeing some downward momentum in the Dow. Otherwise, that's really where we are at this point. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.